Life out in the old west might have been full of opportunity for some, but not for all. And even those who were given opportunities often had to fight for what they got. Welcome back to the hive, my fellow bumblebees. It is I, your guest host Amanda, buzzing on in. Today we're here to talk about some unusual jobs that in some cases women were forced to have, although not all of these necessarily fit that part. And I will be focusing on the time period of the Old West for this one. What do you think of the Old West? Was it a land of opportunity or a land filled with veiled oppression? And also I guess it kind of depends on like which Old West we're we're talking about. Number 10, saloon girls. All right, I'm going to start off with one of the most often talked about jobs when we talk about the Old West and women's roles, that of the saloon girl. A saloon girl wasn't exactly what you might think though. A lot of folks think of them as women of the night, but in reality, they actually had uh, other responsibilities. That wasn't even necessarily what they did. Well, they sometimes worked with shady ladies who, you know, you know what we're talking about. Saloon girls were something completely different for the most part. That wasn't what they did. They did other stuff. So if you think that's what they were up to, not really. Their role was to entertain and sell, sell, sell. They earned commission on drinks they sold, could get paid to dance with men at dance halls. They'd buy little tickets and then they'd give them to the lady and they'd have a little dance, which is kind of cute. And oftentimes they would also be paid when patrons decided to buy them drinks, which were often swapped out by the saloon owner with either colored water or tea so that the saloon girls could keep drinking and working while avoiding becoming intoxicated. Pretty smart. More money for the saloon usually means more commission for the saloon girls that were working there. Honestly, I get that. I used to work as a server. People would always want to buy me drinks and I always had to be like, maybe at the end of my shift because goodness knows me having drinks mid shifts could be terrible for everyone. Just forgetting orders everywhere. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Bumblebee and if you love when we talk about history with you and travel through time, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the good content that we have over here. Also head on over to top 10 nerd and subscribe if you're not already. Number nine, interior coach design. This one is so weird. You can't actually even Google this in the modern age. By the way, I tried. I tried Googling it like a few different times just so I could learn more about like the job and the history of it. Well, I'm not sure if this was so much a job that women were forced to do. It caught my eye as being interesting and unusual and at least I found at least one woman that did it. Back in the day of the old west, many women were busy doing general womanly work, you know, sewing, cooking, keeping house. However, one mention in a paper revealed that at least one woman, the daughter of Charles Toils, we don't even get her name <laughs> apparently, was instead preoccupied with working as an inside finisher for a coat shop. Now, you can't even Google that job today. All you get is stuff about athletic coaches, interior design, and like building muscle. And not in that order, obviously. What I believe this job entails though is working on the finishing of the inside of coach carriages, which would have been common in the days of the Old West and were usually pulled along by horses. But I just realized when I was looking into it that like there's probably people that are younger today that wouldn't even know, I don't even know if some people would know what a coach is if I just said that. And then I realized, wow, that's hard in 2023. <laughs> Whoa. <gasps> We need more books. I need like a shelf of just history books that I can use for research when I'm doing lists for Bumblebee. Number eight, Hello Girls. While Hello Girls became more famous during World War One, Hello Girls were actually referenced as early as 1889 in Mark Twain's A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. In regards to that term being used for them, Hello Girls might sound like some weird and creepy job the women were forced into, Hello Girls. But in reality, they were actually just switchboard operators. They were called Hello Hello girls because they answered the phone with a friendly hello before they helped to direct your call. And obviously they were called girls because you know, they're mainly girls. So actually I don't even know if men were switchboard operators. That I don't know if that was a thing. If it was, it was probably like one guy in a room of ladies. Switchboard operators might be a thing of the past today, but way back when, they were actually crucial. In fact, in World War I, they were even considered to be part of the military in the US, being sworn into the US Army Signal Corps. Up until 1977, they were considered to be contracted as civilian employees of the US military. True story. Number seven, wet nurse. I have always 
found this job to be pretty strange. But at the same time, considering that, you know, we didn't always have baby formula and stuff like that throughout history, it is a job that makes sense. I'm not saying I hate this job or anything, I'm just saying I've always found it to be a strange job every time I read about it in history. Wet nurse is a job that also existed, of course, back in the Old West, but it isn't mutually exclusive to that period, like Hello Girls. If you've never heard of them, wet nurses basically took over for mothers who perished or perhaps simply chose not to breastfeed their babies. This was back in the day when if you chose not to breastfeed as a mother, you really didn't like have any other options when it came to the care of your infant. So this job was an important one, but also one that was reserved for only obviously biological women because you gotta be able to do the thing. Wet nurses tended to have their own babies, which was how they could be sure that they would produce milk. They also would sometimes double as caretakers and nannies as well throughout history. Number six, bowling alley operator. I'm going in a totally different direction now. What? Yeah, even back in the old west, people needed to have fun. They needed to bowl. Tons of women became business owners, and while many made their fortune selling pies or as cooks, some had more unexpected business that didn't fit quite as neatly into to the gender norms that we imagine when we think back to the 19th century in the Old West. Apparently, at least one woman ran her own 10-pin bowling alley. I don't know why, but I just really love this idea, so when I was reading about it, I needed to tell you. Just something about folks at the end of their hard day mining just come into this woman's bowling alley to relax, and then she's making bank, not from the gold or the gold rush or anything like that, but from the people attracted to it. Honestly, I think that's the way to do the Old West. If I were alive back then, I would be focusing on profiting off those who came in droves in an attempt to seek their own profit and their own opportunity and fortunes. Gold, that's hard to find. People, not so much. I'm just imagining myself now as an old west bowling alley owner, and I'm just like, that would be who I would be in that world. Whoever's editing this, turn me into an old west bowling alley owner. Number five, gold miner. I've struggled to find a ton of in-depth information about this, but it has been mentioned before that women actually also mined during the gold rush, either out of desperation or because they were just craving a life of adventure and hoped they would find it out west. These women, however, were not always as well documented, and some of them are harder to track down if you want more details on that. However, one such woman I did find who worked as a miner and a prospector throughout her life. Her name was Nellie Cashman. Honestly, she sounds like she would be a miner just like based on her name, like Cashman, like you're gonna be making bank for sure. It sounds like she's gonna be a successful miner at that. Nellie was an Irish immigrant who came to the United States when she was only five years old. She never married and preferred wearing pants to skirts, traveling around most of her life, mining, prospecting, and establishing and running many profitable businesses. Good for her, I love it. Number four, bullfighter. Well, generally, bullfighting was a profession that only men took up, there were a few prominent women bullfighters who even existed way back in the days of the Old West. When it comes to prominent American bullfighters who were women throughout history, one of the most well known if you look into this is Patricia McCormick, who debuted as a bullfighter after quitting college back in 1951. But she wasn't the first woman to have ever fought bulls. There were others throughout history that have been documented, but unlike Patricia, their names were not as well documented. I do think the profession of bullfighting is pretty Pretty messed up, at least on the surface. I, I just feel really bad for the bulls. It feels very cruel. But at the same time, I do think that it is pretty cool that women have been able to break into a field that was so, so dominated by men. And like, you can find them. They, they are, like I said, not as well documented, but there's like paintings of them. These women existed. They were out there. They were fighting bulls. Number three, outlaws. When it comes to women in the Old West, many saw this as a time period that liberated women. In fact, if you read a bunch of articles about this, a lot of people are like, it was great women were out there, they were doing all the things. But that's not completely true. Some were forced to take that sense of liberation kind of into their own hands when the suggested land of the free actually failed them. That's what happened in Pearl Hart's case somewhat. She was actually born a Canadian in Lindsay, Ontario. While she was given opportunity and an education growing up, Pearl wasn't as interested in academics and instead decided to seek a life of adventure. She would end up eloping and then leaving her husband who often mistreated her, looking for a way to make ends meet she worked a bunch of different jobs before she ended up partnered with Joe Boot and turned to a life of crime. We don't really think of women as being outlaws back in the day, but they were. She was made famous for being one of the only females to have committed a stagecoach robbery, which also was not as common as you would think it would be. 
back in the old west. Number two, servants. This one is unusual in sadly the worst way. Now we're gonna talk about some hard truths, friends. Some hard truths of women in the old west. While many women in the old west were given more freedoms, usually freedom to some becomes oppression to others, especially if we're talking about the place of women in history. Generally it's like women versus women. So like this female group, get stuff and this other women group has stuff taken away from them. In the case of women belonging to minority groups in the Wild West, this was more often the case. For women coming over from China in the late 19th century, many of them were actually forced to leave their homes and head west. While enslavement would be outlawed by this time, the isolation of some of the places out west made it easier for people to turn an eye to what was basically enslavement on paper. I mean, not even just basically, like it straight up was. If Even though it wasn't considered as such by the law. The people of China also sold off their daughters in some cases, who would then basically have no choice but to go, because they were just sold off. Those who were forced to immigrate and arrived in San Francisco were even at a time forced into pens where they were held before being sent out to mining camps. And some of them where they were held before they were once again sold off, so pretty terrible. Number one, Gold Mountain Wives. While some might not consider being a wife to be a job, back in the day, I would argue, for many, it was. When Chinese women settled in the Old West, some ended up married to successful miners. As we discussed earlier, life was not easy for Chinese immigrants coming over to the Old West, no matter their gender identity, honestly. Women were often forced into jobs they didn't necessarily want and were often treated like servants, with many even being sold to brothels upon arrival. However, despite all of this, back home in China their hardships were very rarely even seen by their families and relatives, as all they saw was the wealth and gold that was being sent over back to them. Instead of acknowledging the daily discrimination of the Chinese immigrants in America, women who ended up marrying wealthy miners were often referred to as gold mountain wives and were considered actually to be fortunate. Which is pretty crazy when you read into all the stuff that all the Chinese immigrants had to deal with back in the day. It's pretty terrible. That's about it. Personally, I don't think I would want to live back in the old west days. <laughs> it sounds dangerous and not so great overall for women, although some certainly did make the best of it, so good for them. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the future.